Howdy everybody, Richard Zane here for the Tex Ags Radio Rewind on this Friday. Friday before Halloween, the Aggies are on the bye week, but we still had a packed show. Today's show heard Olin Buchanan sharing his favorite Gary Blair story as the legendary head coach announced that 2021-22 will be his final season at the helm of the Aggies. Chris Gordy of Sports Talk 790 talked about this week's slate across the Southeastern Conference. We talked to Jacob Norwood of Texas A&M Hockey as they get ready to BTHOTU tonight and on Saturday. And then we also talked to our guy Pugs getting an Aggie basketball update And as the season's about to begin. It is the Tex Ags Radio Rewind here on a Friday morning. Wow. Do you have a favorite Gary Blair story to tell, Olin? I mean, well, it's very it's selfish. like the mayor. Well, I mean, it's very Everyone's selfish. Got one. It's very selfish. Okay. Okay, so let me say that. But this just kind of tells you the kind of guy he is. Gary and I, now we had a lot of conversations. I used to cover women's basketball in Texas. Yeah. And, and he and I would have a lot of conversations that had nothing to do with Texas and, and A&M, just the way uh, – women's basketball, just the, the way it was going and things like that. We had a lot of conversations. We got along really well. And uh, I had, it was in 2006, I had uh, decided to take that job with Yahoo and Rivals. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was covering, one of the last things I covered for the American Statesman was a, a game between A&M and Texas. So we're in the post-game presser. And at this time, Texas won because at this time, uh, it might have been Gary's first, maybe second year. He's still building, you know, getting the foundation laid. And Gary, again, this is not about me. It's about, though, to tell you the kind of guy Gary is. He starts the press conference. He said, before we get started, I just want to say, you know, there's – I know Olin Buchanan is I'm, – I'm paraphrasing you. Know, I know Olin Buchanan is uh, leaving the Statesman, uh, going to go on to do some other things. But – I just want to tell him how much he appreciate the coverage he's done for women's basketball. And, and you just go, you know, and it was almost embarrassing because, you know, you're with your, you know how reporters are. They're all kind of a snarly bunch that, you know, you're, you're not supposed to be friends with anybody, right? Right. And so Gary is saying all these nice things. And I actually had some of my colleagues, you know, looking at me and kind of snickering. But – what a nice gesture, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, just what a nice gesture that that, and that's the kind of guy Gary is, you know. I think my favorite thing about Coach Blair is when he would come back here do his uh, radio hits inside this studio, mm -hmm. and before he comes on the show, home, sure. he'll come back in the back and kind of make chit chat about uh, with the people in the production room. Never wants to talk about basketball. Only wants to talk yeah. about his Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, so. yeah, you know, and. Uh, it, He's he's a fan of sports. The only like, ranked matchup in the Southeastern Conference is number ten Ole Miss at number eighteen Auburn on the Plains. The Tigers two and a half point favorite. Who do you think takes this one, Chris? Yeah, I mean, my brain says Ole Miss because Auburn. I just feel like is a fluke. You know, a little bit of a flukish team this year. Uh, Bo Nix week in and week out. We see a good Bo Nix. We see a bad Bo Nix. We see a good Bo Nix and a bad Bo Nix. So. Um, I couldn't believe when I saw the Auburn open as a one point favorite. And now it's up to it. They're a three point home favorite against Ole Miss, who's a top 10 team. It just wow. doesn't make any sense in my mind. The only thing I look at is this Matt Corral got really banged up late in that Tennessee game. There were some questions if he was going to play against LSU last week. He did, but Corral didn't have to do much. It was all turn around, handing the ball off to Snoop Connor, Jerry and Ely. He really didn't have to do a lot with throwing the football. I think he will have to throw a football and be successful against Auburn's defense. It's going to be a hostile environment, but man, my brain still says go with Ole Miss. The, the guys in the desert must know something if they're still leaning it for Auburn mm -hmm. as the home team, but I'm still, I'm not a buyer on, on Auburn just yet. Brian Harson has to go prove it, win a big game for me. And Bo Nix for that matter has to have back to back to back, you know, consistent, really good performances for me to buy into him. So I'm sticking with Ole Miss, but man, if Auburn proves me wrong, I'll give them their props next week. On what is your pitch? Why should they come out tonight out of any other game on the schedule? I mean, ultimately, you know, it, it's a blast from the past. I mean, you're looking into one of the greatest rivalries in sports, you know, one of the greatest rivalries in, in college sports, especially. And so, you know, you look at all these other different sports and hockey in and itself, you know, if you are from the, the area or from Texas, you know, you may not have ever been to a hockey game before, and it's such a unique sport compared to, you know, 
you're growing up, you might go watch a baseball game. You obviously watch a football game in Texas and stuff like that. But you go to a hockey game, it's a completely different atmosphere. You know, anytime we've invited somebody out that has never been to a game before, they come to the game and they're like, wow, this is, you know, different than anything I've ever watched before. And hockey's just a different sport and a different beast in a whole uh, from a, a fan standpoint. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at last year and yeah, there's a lot of that you could just throw away, but there was also some pieces, obviously, that you have to throw away because they're no longer there, right? I mean, mm-hmm. losing Emmanuel Miller was big. Emmanuel Miller, while he was limited at times offensively, Emmanuel Miller made a lot of plays for himself and his teammates because he attracted so much attention. And they really focused on him offensively as an AM staff. They did a lot through him in the high post and at the top of the key. He attacked off the dribble. So losing Emmanuel Miller, I, I don't know if we really know what that's going to look like. Now, the, the the good piece to it is that 2020, 2021 is over. Yes. Right? So, I mean, this is a team that their average loss margin, I think, was 13 points or 14 points in their 10 losses last year. Those weren't close games. Um, and so I think we have to try and remove ourselves a little bit. I do think that they're – their roster as a, as a remake, I actually expected that to happen in year one or year two. And that didn't happen. Right. I I really thought that buzz would come in and he would bring in transfers and he would, he would go the, the junior college route and he would build that way in year one and two. And he didn't do that. He um, ran with the guys that he had. They had a a few guys that they brought in. Um, And now this year's team, I think is a, is a remake. You brought in Steve Rockefeller to be, you know, your kind of lead assistant coach who's been a head coach and who's done a lot of things at a lot of levels and has some really good relationships. And I think Buzz has leaned on Rock a little bit here. Um, you know, here's the silver lining. In year three at Marquette, uh, they were 22 and 15. And in year three at Virginia Tech, and he took over a really bad situation at Virginia Tech, they were 22 and 11. Um, now, both those teams won over 20 games the year before year three, so in year two. But uh, I do like what they've done with this roster. I think it's a more going to be a more exciting brand of basketball. I expect it to be a more exciting brand of basketball. And quite honestly, the talent is there compared to the talent just wasn't there the last two years. Jamie Morris telling me to hurry up. So if you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to TexAgs on YouTube. Become a TexAgs premium subscriber at TexAgs.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Richard Zane. Jamie Morris, thanks for telling me to hurry up. Let's go eat.